Danielle, another straight sets victory and into the semifinals here in Charleston. Just give us your overall thoughts on the match and your performance today. Yeah, Lisa and I have had a couple of um, close matches previously. Uh, I think with her game and her over the course of her career, she's proved that she can beat anybody on any given day. She can be really tricky. Um, so I knew that coming out, I was going to have to hit some hard shots and try to push her around the court as much as I could. And uh, yeah, I I went out swinging, went for some big targets. The, the wind was a little bit tricky at times. Um, not easy. You have to make adjustments during these types of these types of days. Um, but I got off to a good start, and yeah, I'm just thrilled to be keeping this uh, streak alive. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, I kind of would like to have whatever you're having. Uh, where is all of the immense energy coming from at this point? The what? The energy. The energy. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, you know, I, I like I said earlier in the week, like this is my last year and I want to go out with a bang and just play my best tennis and do the best that I can. Obviously, I think you're always striving um, to play your best tennis um, and sometimes – it works out really well, and, and other times you hit bumps in the road. And I think uh, earlier in the year, um, and even towards the end of last year, like I was playing really great tennis and had some close matches. Um, it's just like the difference of like this much, like in some of those outcomes. And you know, the margins can be so slim, especially in these long three set matches. And when when sets are going seven five and seven six, and I had a lot of those last year, um, and. It was just a few points here and there. And so now I'm kind of dealing um, with those situations when the sets get closer, like a little bit better. And then I feel like I'm also, um, you know, doing some things in the beginning of the matches too, where I get off to a good start and that's, that's working in my favor. When you're out on the match court itself, are you, it, it, maybe the intangibles of the streak sort of impacts, I think the confidence, but are you, are you thinking actively about, Oh, if I win this match, it'll be this number or that's not a part of the the thought process? Um, for me, I feel like I've spent so much time like focusing on the process versus like the outcome. I feel like when I focus more on my process and what I have to do to get there, I am more focused, I'm more centered. I don't play with as much pressure. And I think that can be hard to do because you obviously like we all have goals and we want to accomplish those things. So you can think sometimes like, Oh, I want to make quarterfinals this week or I want to win the tournament. And you, you can't think about those things too much while you're playing, because if you're thinking about that, then you can lose track of what you need to do in your strategy um, and in your routines. So I feel like I've done a really great job recently of my routines between points, um, visualizing and and um, and strategizing as well. I feel like I've learned a lot over the last couple of years, and um, I think there was a big adjustment that I needed to make um, coming from college tennis to the professional level, um, positionally, and um, it took me a little bit of time to figure some things out. If you had it to do over, would you do the, the same way, go do the college first? Oh, definitely. I mean... I don't necessarily think that college has to be for everyone. I think college is a great thing um, if that's what you want to do um, and that's the route that you want to go. I didn't feel at you know, 15, 16, 17, 18 that I was quite mature enough to be able to deal with the stresses and pressure of the tour. And I think there was a push um, by most of the people in my life around that time for me to go to college. Um, my parents didn't graduate from university. They didn't go to college. Um, my brother did. Um, but I really saw education as a way to open up the doors for other opportunities, not just with my tennis, but outside of tennis. What did you major in? I majored in media studies. Yeah. Um, so for, yeah, for me, I think it was, a, it was the right decision. Um, I needed more time to mature, evolve, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, and I would definitely do it over again. Um, what What have you impressed yourself most with this week? I think after Miami, you know, there's always whispers of, is this person going to pull out because they just won the tournament? 
And then the draw that you've had when you look at the last four days, is there one or two things that pop up being like, damn, I've, I've done that this week? Yeah, I think luckily in Miami, I was only playing an hour, hour, 20 minutes, hour, 30 minutes at a time on court. So I didn't have a lot of long matches really until the end of the tournament when I played Elena. So I also had two days off before I came here, basically. So I had a little bit of time to rest and recover. I do think it's tricky going from hard to clay, especially with the footing and um, getting yourself comfortable with the bounces. And it's a little bit different game style. And you have to be able to, to adapt to that. I think ideally, of course, you would want to have more time. But I was playing such good tennis. And Charleston is one of our favorite tournaments, I think, across the board. I think if you ask... Uh, most of the players on tour, this is a this is a player favorite event. And I love coming here. I have so many friends in Charleston. Uh, two of my closest friends live here now. Um, and so it was a no-brainer to come out here. I I also felt good physically, so it was kind of like, yeah, let's just try to keep it rolling and, and see, see how I do. Um, and I think it should give me some confidence now the rest of the clay court season um, to to – to have some good wins and to feel confident with my ability on the clay courts. Cause the last couple of years I haven't gotten to play as much on the clay as I would have liked to, because unfortunately with the timing of my injuries and surgeries, um, a lot of times that's fallen around the clay court season. So, and I've always thought that I have a um, versatile enough game to be able to do well on the clay. I made quarterfinals, I think at French open one year. And I also, won a 250 in Palermo and I actually won the 250 in Palermo and then I went on hard courts like the next week and played San Jose so I kind of been trying to remind myself of that <laughs> anything's possible so just have to try why'd you write YOLO on the camera you only live once it's one of my favorite sayings it always has been I used to have a scooter in college like a little Vespa like scooter that I would drive around and I had a big sticker on it that said YOLO and I uh yeah I it was like a nickname too D YOLO for a while so yeah just a lot of fun vibes and energy around it I love YOLO should we bring that back D YOLO I feel like it's kind of outdated but like I kind of like that um, you know, certain phrases kind of just like get you like excited or you're like, yeah, like that really resonates with me. YOLO. Yeah. YOLO is my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes when I say YOLO, my friends are like, oh, it's so cringe. I'm like, yeah, but sometimes like the cringy things are, are actually like great. <laughs>